Greetings, Soul Family. I am Obleron, the Lord of Love and the Magister of the Cube. Thank you for joining me on today's episode where we're going to talk about guides for fire signs. So we're going to start off with the fire signs, which is Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. Now, before we get into the individual sign, one thing that they all have in common is the element of fire, which means that anyone born under those signs has the innate and natural ability to call upon guides of a fire elemental nature. Now, this includes salamanders, fire drakes, fire dragons, fire fairies, any one of those types of, of guides will be well suited for anyone born under a fire sign. Another thing that you can also look at is, well, what are some of the characteristics that all fire signs have in common and call upon guides for those uh, particular attributes. One thing which is common to all fire signs is strength, valor, and perseverance. Fire signs are passionate, they're creative, and they go into everything they do wholeheartedly. Okay, now let's go into the sign of Aries. Aries is a cardinal fire sign, which not only kicks off the start of spring, but also kicks off the start of the zodiac. Those born under the sign of Aries would do well to look for guides who adhere to a warrior code. They may try to find guides in, let's say, veteran ancestors, or perhaps gods of war. They may also look to guides that favor individuality and strength of character. If you would like to call upon Aries as a spirit guide, you may consider finding pictures or statues of him. You may also consider keeping replicas of spears, swords, helmets, and shields as offerings to Aries. Spirit animals associated with Aries can include dogs and horses, as well as vultures and woodpeckers. And Aries also favors the color red. Another guide for the sign of Aries also takes us to ancient Egypt, and it is Sekhmet. Sekhmet is the goddess of war, justice, destruction, and healing. Sekhmet is associated with being able to heal all illnesses except for those of the eyes. She is generally considered the matron goddess of Reiki. Some also suggest that the relationship between Sekhmet and Hathor is similar to Kali and Durga, which suggests also a possible link to India. Some offerings to Sekhmet can include beer, arrows, and incense. Okay, so moving right along, we are now at Leo, which represents fixed fire. And Leo is also called the king of the zodiac because its symbol is represented by the sun. So one guide for Leos would be none other than the sun himself, which is the Greek god Helios. He was the original sun god of ancient Greece and was eventually replaced by Apollo. Helios is also witness to all crimes committed in the daylight hours, whereas Hecate is witness to all crimes committed at night. Helios is an excellent guide when you want to illuminate the darkness. The animal associated with Helios is cattle, and he owns one for every day of the solar year. In ancient times, offerings of gymnastic competitions were held for Helios. And if you're not a gymnast, then sculptures or pictures of gymnasts would do in replacement of gymnastic competitions. Another possible guide for Leos would be the goddess Diana. She is an ancient goddess and was definitely there before the Romans and is possibly Etruscan in origin. She can represent magic as well as witchcraft and fertility and hunting amongst other things. She is associated also with slaves and outlaws, which is one of the reasons why she didn't become an official state goddess of the Roman Empire. She appears as a beautiful woman and considers oak groves and forests as her sacred space. She considers all wild animals her spirit animals. However, she has a penchant for wolves, dog, deer, and black cats. She generally likes a hard drink as an offering. Moving along, we get to the last fire sign, which is Sagittarius. Now, Sagittarius rules over the ninth house, and it governs spirituality and philosophy, um, higher learning, as well as travel. One possible guide for Sagittarians could be Chiron, the wounded healer. He is considered to be a civilized centaur, and he is also considered an immortal. He is a legendary tutor and teacher, and he taught such heroes as Achilles, Jason, and Heracles, or Hercules. He is considered many things, including a musician, healer, and prophet. He appears as an old man centaur with a white beard. Another potential guide for Sagittarius would be Jupiter. 
He was once considered the supreme deity of Rome, and he was also head of the Roman pantheon. Working with Jupiter can sometimes be difficult because he has a tendency to remain aloof and distant. However, offerings of wine, cake, and cooked meals can definitely get him to come around. Well, I think that's about it for today. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Now, this is by no means a complete list, and if you have any suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. Also, if there's enough demand, I'll probably make multiple versions of these types of videos as well. Thanks again. Much love and blessings. I love you all, and now we shall close with the chant of Oblaron. Aum dei sote, aum dei Oblaron, aum dei sote, aum dei Oblaron.